Somebody once told me that to be seen is, is to be loved. With a canvas like this here, I tend to mess it up first. Make it imperfect. And most times people turn themselves towards a camera they put their own best face forward that they would like the world to see. My job is to, to capture whatever is in front of me regardless of that's how people would like to be seen. I think a lot of the unintentional aspects of my work ended up being called what somebody told me is called social practice. I think I was 16. Larry Harden, may he rest in peace, took me on for an independent study. I'd failed out of concert band in the zero period here at Bellarmine. I just couldn't wake up that early. So I needed to, to construct a class out of thin air. And I talked to Larry, who was my, my counsel, my, my mentor here. And he created this independent study where I would paint in his room. And on Fridays at 8 a.m. from 8 to 9, he and I, one-on-one, -on -one, would discuss earnestly whatever it is that I had painted. Being called upon to, to take that exercise seriously, that, that it would be the subject of conversation between me and a teacher, to have that, that message that what you're doing is, is worth discussing, that what you're doing is, is worth consideration. Um, it's powerful. There are always leaps of faith. I took my first trip to New York City in March of 2004 to see if I can show my book around, my portfolio to, to magazines. But the dream of maybe getting the cover of Time Magazine or Rolling Stone at the time was, was a big deal for me. One old man, Gene Case at Avenging Angels Incorporated, a nonprofit uh, for good causes design studio. He said, what are you doing this week? I said, working for you. And they said, we just got a call uh, from The Nation magazine. They need a cover, portrait of Hugo Chavez, president, uh, dictator, prime minister, whatever he was of uh, Venezuela, about something called petropopulism, using the, uh, the nation's vast oil reserves to fund things like socialized medicine and education. So I got to make a picture about that. And it was a cover of a magazine with national exposure, theoretically. I said, this is my big break. I'm moving to New York City. The project in Crown Heights was born out of a, a selfish, you know, upbringing. I wanted to be a better painter. Uh, around 2012, I started painting with friends and putting an exercise in front of myself to see how much of a picture I could possibly bring from start to finish in the four hour span. It led me to say, well, this is, this is great exercise, but I wish I could make this my full-time occupation. I wanna do this for a living. Crown Heights at the time was one of the most rapidly changing, demographic shifting, rent rising neighborhoods in New York City at the moment in 2015 and is fabled for its diversity including Caribbean and Hasidic Jewish and you know African American all sorts of folks came to live in Crown Heights and everybody was in this two mile by one mile rectangle about 125,000 people but the truth is we didn't interact as well as we could everybody stayed in their pockets and that didn't sit well with me either. You know, the idea that we would, you know, celebrate our diversity but not actually say hi, that's, it. That, that's silly to me. So I said, yeah, let's do something about that. And so the work then became capturing a community in transition. When I interview people, while I paint portraits of them, especially during exercises and community documentation, I always like to ask everybody about their notion, how they define wealth, comfort, and security. 
uh, especially if they had to explain it to a 10 year old child, to a, to a fifth grader. Because I think that really makes people kind of like stretch their own brain to like, how, how would I simplify it? So as everyone explained to me what making a living was for them, what, what was wealth and comfort and security for them, I noticed one peculiar trend. There was one fellow who made $30,000 a year. Another fellow made $100,000 a year. And still another made $300,000 a year. And I asked them the same question. Do you feel wealthy? Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel secure? And each person, despite their vast disparities of you know, socioeconomic resources, they all said, I'm not rich, I'm not poor, but I'm comfortable. And I thought that was remarkable. Common ground is easy enough to find. If you just talk and listen and give people space, each and every person I interviewed had something remarkable to say. They had some bit of wisdom that they were sitting on. They had something to share. They had something to give. And everybody was worth listening to. And that was remarkable to me. And it inadvertently turned into an oral history project. We ended up raising $60,000 over the course of a year and a half to provide 200 oil painted portraits from life to people regardless of their ability to pay for such a thing and captured a, a broad swath to accurately reflect the demographics of this neighborhood in transition, recorded a collected oral history that we were able to share to other local historical societies and um, damn thing ended up in uh, you know Brooklyn Borough Hall and the, the Brooklyn Museum and the Brooklyn Children's Museum and different incarnations and iterations and, and uh, culminated in 200 paintings. My studies here at Bellarmine, this place, and the people that I met here, they're the ones who, who squared me away to, to be who I am today. I've still got plenty of room for improvement and I, I aim to, to just keep moving in that direction.